Hey, Falcon fans, I'm Thomas Mod. Welcome to Atlanta Falcons Today. It is a Tuesday, which means we need to jump in here and look at our Week 3 overreactions. Every single week here on the channel, I take a look at Twitter and see what Falcon fans are saying, and a lot of people overreact to wins or losses. So I take the five best overreactions that I saw and break down whether it's true, an actual overreaction, or it's not an overreaction that's actually accurate. So let's jump in, of course, talking about the Falcons' big win, 17-14 over the New York Giants. We did a reaction video yesterday, and basically I started the video, which was I'll start the video again by saying, at least they won, guys. I know we can overreact. There was some good. There was a lot of bad. They could have lost the game, but they did. And they went on a scoring drive and a game-winning drive. They made the field goal, and so they're sitting at 1-2. and two. It's a lot better than it could have been. If we were 0-3, I would have to come on here and talk about the season being over because even though the schedule is easy the next couple of weeks, you, you just don't come back from 0-3, right? 1-2, and two, though, you can at least make a run here. If you win on Sunday, you're at 500 and you're 2-2, two and two, and it's a winnable game as we've talked about um, against a team that's not that great in the Washington football team. So, yes, guys, this. I feel like there were a lot of glass-half-empty Falcon fans out there, and we'll start the video by asking, you, 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 are you a glass-half-full or a glass-half-empty Falcon fan? There'll be a pinned comment down below. Type F if you're a glass-half-full, you're an optimistic Falcon fan, or type E if you're empty, you're a glass half empty, aka a pessimistic Falcon fan. F for over full, E for empty, pin comment, go down below right now. All right, my first overreaction, and again, I saw this on Twitter literally like a billion times yesterday, doesn't matter, the Falcons are a bad football team. Like, this is an overreaction. Like, the Falcons can still win some games. And what have we seen? This is important. What have we seen through the first three weeks? Progress. Now, offense, defense, both bad first week. Second week, Offense was a little better. Defense hadn't figured things out yet, okay? Third week, you get your first win. Offense, yeah, it still needs to improve. However, the defense was night and day better. And the front four is playing great. The secondary, even though they're banged up, playing very, very well. And if the defense keeps giving you less than 21 points and holds a team, I mean, listen, the Giants' offense isn't bad. They have playmakers just like the Falcons do. Holding them to 14 points is absolutely huge. And look at this. There are a lot of one and two teams in the NFL right now, and you can't really say the Falcons are better or worse than the majority of these teams. Like, I feel better about the Falcons than the Bears, than the Texans, maybe the Chiefs, because the Chiefs are great. I feel better about the Falcons than the Dolphins. Um, the Vikings, I think they're a little better than people think. I say the Falcons are a little bit worse than the Vikings. Then you go over to these other teams. New England, I think they're better with the Falcons than the New England Patriots. Their offense has been very anemic and struggling. The Steelers, the Steelers, talk about a, a quarterback who needs to get out of there. I mean, I feel better with the Falcons than the Steelers. Seahawks, no, I feel better with the Seahawks. Washington, yes, you'll see it on Sunday. And then, of course, our Falcons, those are all one and two teams. Yes, the offense needs to start kind of coming along. We'll talk about that here in just one second. But we can at least be a little bit optimistic about the fact the Falcons have won a game, which is something they did not do at this point last year. Remember, two years ago, it was like one and eight. The start was absolutely terrible. I think we're at a point where the Falcons, if they can win on Sunday, are starting to kind of bring some fans back into the excitement level that they were preseason, because a lot of us were saying eight or nine wins, then we saw the first two games and went down to four or five, and now I think we can get back to eight or nine if they win on Sunday. Now, we have plenty more videos coming up the next couple of days, so make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. We do this plug every single week because we're trying to grow as fast as we can, and we can make more videos for you. The more subscribers we have, the more videos we can go ahead and make for you guys to enjoy, so go down below and hit that red subscribe button. It's free, and it's your one-stop shop for everything regarding the Falcons. Like, how much Falcon talk if you see, excuse me, on ESPN over the past couple of days. Not a lot, right? Here, all we do, 10 minutes at a time, here on the Falcons uh, Today channel. Make sure you guys go down below and subscribe. Okay, next overreaction I saw uh, was offense it looked like last year, like it's really bad. Now, this is not an overreaction because towards the latter half of the year, the offense was bad. But if you actually think about it, this offense is, looks a little worse than where it was at, the, at this point last year. The first four games last year, the Falcon offense was scoring points. I mean, the Seattle game, they scored 25. The Dallas game, they scored 39. The Chicago game, they scored 26. And then it started to peter out. They scored 16 against the Green Bay Packers. And then they scored whatever it was, 14, 15 against the, the I think it was Carolina the next week. But the offense started great and then got worse. Right now, we're seeing the offense start bad, and we're hoping it's going to go ahead and, and, and work its way up. The offense is bad right now. Like we, That's not an overreaction. The offense is bad right now, but I think they have the tools to fix it. The offensive line is going to be mediocre the entire year. Jalen Mayfield's gotten better. Caleb McGarry was iffy on Sunday, but still only gave up a couple of sacks to Matt Ryan. I think if they can continue to scheme it to where he gets the ball out of his hands faster, and as I talked about yesterday, find a way to get the ball to Kyle Pitts, then this offense can start to get things rolling here. I hope Sunday is the day against the Washington football team where they can start to really open this offense up and score some points because I want to see more than 17 but hey at least the offense when it counted in the fourth quarter uh, was able to get the job done speaking of Sunday this is a chance to get back to 500 like you just think the Falcons will be at add two and two after next week you think they will type Y down below for yes I think they will not type N down below for no now I saw this a lot yesterday and I really not maybe not so much yesterday but the past couple of weeks saying the Falcons should have drafted Justin Fields now 
it's unclear if this is an overreaction or an underreaction or you know, a, a true reaction, but what we know through the first three weeks is that Justin Fields does not seem ready to play. And so if you were of the opinion that, oh, well, our offensive line is bad, we should have drafted a mobile quarterback like Justin Fields, then the first couple of weeks should have told you that that's completely false. Like, the Falcons are better off now, this year, without Justin Fields versus where they would have been with Justin Fields. Not saying, you know, three, four years from now, they're probably better off with Justin Fields. But for those of you who wanted Fields this year to start, look at what happened against the Browns yesterday. Uh, last week, or sorry, yesterday. I mean, it was it was really bad. Now you say, oh, the Browns have a terrible offensive line, or oh, the Browns, they have a terrible offensive scheme, or sorry, the Bears have a terrible offensive line, or the Bears have a terrible offensive scheme. Yes, that's true, but the argument that people made in Atlanta was that Justin Fields would make up for a multitude of Falcon sins, a.k.a. the Falcons' offensive line and play calling. Very clearly not, not the case. So Justin Fields was 6-20 for 68 yards, ran for his life. I mean, again, Matt Nagy looks terrible, but still, running for his life, his mobility didn't save the day, whereas Matt Ryan... Behind an equally bad, maybe a little bit better offensive line, 27 of 36, 243 yards, two touchdowns, no picks, game-winning drive. Like, so for all the Matt Ryan haters out there, and I understand why, because there are times that Matt Ryan looks old and he's infuriating, he still is playing at a high level and still gives you the best chance to win versus what any of the rookie quarterbacks would have done this year. Again, that's this year. Had they drafted Fields and sat him, a lot of us would still be happy with that, but for those of you who wanted to play Fields, draft him, and play him immediately, the Bears are figuring out just how tough it is to win with a rookie quarterback behind a bad offensive line. Matt Ryan at least gives you a chance to win. Now, we'll get into my fourth overreaction from week three. First, though, shout out to our friends at BetUS. Everyone's asking me, you know, what, what betting website I use, and this is it. It's BetUS, chatsports.com forward slash betfalcons. That promo code is falcons125. Get 125% deposit bonus whenever you first sign up, meaning you can bet on the Falcons or bet on the Braves tonight as they open up that three-game stretch against the Philadelphia Phillies. If they sweep them, really, if they just win two out of three, they're probably going to win the division. Lenny and I are looking hot, too. Go ahead and get to you betting by going to chatsports.com forward slash betfalcons. Use that promo code falcons125. Five. The spread right now is even for uh, Washington and Atlanta. That sounds about right. I'm sure it will shift probably in the favor of the Falcons because they'll be at home. But the over under sits at 48.5. I'm thinking about betting the Falcons again. I bet them last week and I won against the Giants. Might bet them this week against uh, the Fal- uh, against Washington. Jump in and bet with me, our friends at BetUS. Okay, um, week three overreaction. Someone said on Twitter, defensive line is the best in years. Not an overreaction. You're 100% right. This is the best defensive line we've seen in Atlanta in a long time. Now, it's not great. Like, it's not fantastic, but it's way better than where it was this time last year. Like, they never got pressure, and they didn't get pressure in week one. Week two and three, multiple sacks of Brady and multiple sacks now of um, Daniel Jones. They're sitting middle of the pack, and if you had asked us before the season, you know, hey, Falcons are middle of the pack in sacks, does that make you happy? Yes. I mean, sitting that tie for 15th with teams like the Saints and the Seahawks and the 49ers only have six sacks. And I, I, I think that we have to give credit where credit is due with not only Dean Peace, but the fact that defensive line and guys like Dante Fowler and, of course, Brady Jarrett are, 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 are overplaying what we expected. And if the Falcon defensive line keeps playing this good, the defense is going to keep allowing the team to be in chances to win games, and hopefully they'll win a lot of games going forward. So shout out to the defensive line. This is the best they've played in a long time, and it's still not great. They need to draft somebody next year, but at least they're competent right now, and that is a lot more than we thought they'd be before the start of the season. All right, final reaction here. I tweeted about this, and people thought I was crazy. I said the Falcons would win four out of five. They'd done the first one. Check. So I'm going to say it again. Falcons will win three of their next four, and that's not an overreaction. Like, as we keep saying, look at their schedule. Washington, Jets, Dolphins, Panthers. The only team that should scare you on that list is the Panthers, but yet the Panthers are very much an iffy football team right now. Like, they're the worst 3-0 team because they played nobody. The Washington football team is not good. They should be able to beat Washington next week. The Jets are terrible. That's a guaranteed win. If they lose to the Jets, then we'll have some real issues here. At the Dolphins, the Dolphins have a ton of issues right now and couldn't even get a win uh, in overtime against the uh, Las Vegas Raiders yesterday. They can go on a run here. I feel very confident in that. It's not an overreaction. Even if they went, let's say, two of their next four, they're still sitting there right around 500, just below, with one more win putting them over the top. I think we're sitting at a point where the Falcons, right around week eight, are going to be right around 500, if not better. Like they could be five and three based on the schedule that we're seeing. If they're five and three, the only four more wins gets you to nine, and that gets you to the postseason. So don't abandon ship yet, even though the NFC South says they're the bottom of the barrel. I expect Tampa Bay. Uh, to be at the top. I expect Carolina to come back a little bit, and the Saints are very much as Jameis Winston goes, and a couple lucky throws on Sunday against uh, the New England Patriots. What do you guys think? Through eight games, let's just say, let's just fast forward ahead. Week eight, what will their record be? I'm saying hopefully five and three, right? So that's one more loss, and then, of course, sitting here right now with four more wins. That's where I'm going to go for the next five, as I mentioned. What will the Falcons record be at week eight? Let me know your thoughts down below right now in the comments section. 
Ultimate for today here on our Atlanta Falcons overreaction video here on a Tuesday. Plenty of news and rumors, including our mailbag video coming up in the next couple of days. I appreciate all of our subscribers. I haven't said that a lot, but if you're not a subscriber and you want to join, go down below, just hit the red subscribe button, and then, of course, you can be a part of the, your one-stop shop, your Falcons home here on YouTube, uh, Atlanta Falcons Today. Again, I'm Thomas Mott, Ultimate for today on our video as we go ahead and sign off. Enjoy the rest of your day.